<laughs> then let's go with the weekend one. So if you start, uh, yeah, for me, uh, I was playing with my online video game friends, and we are going to play some Goe this night. So that's going to be fun. And then we are, yeah, we are going uh, like this. We have a very beautiful uh, places to walk, and yeah, we usually use the weekends to walk with them, and that's that's awesome. And uh, yeah, chill and rest a bit. I'll pass long, walks, to... long, long walks yeah. or just... Yeah, right. no, long walk, like hours, like four hours, stuff like that is awesome. It's really awesome and it's super beautiful, the place. Great. Uh, I'll pass it to you, Santi. Thank you. Uh, I, it looks like it's going to be a nice weekend, so hopefully I'll get on the bike, I'll relax a little bit and chat with some friends that I haven't seen for quite a while. So that's basically the plan for the weekend. What about you, Sean? Uh, you know, I think uh, springtime is starting to finally come to L.A., so we're going from 65 degrees back to 75 degrees um, Fahrenheit. So uh, I'll be outside running. Maybe uh, maybe we'll get to go do a hike or something, but we'll be back outside again finally after our very cold winter. Mm -hmm. Cold winter, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. Okay. <laughs> what about you, Griff? Yeah, cold winter. I love winters in LA. <laughs> um, yeah, actually a lot of the same. Go on a bike ride with a bunch of little kids like I do every... I have a lot of fun on these Saturday bike rides and uh, go to the market and then work in a bathtub for like at least a day. Yeah. All right. And you, Ivy? Um, I'm staying in a dive um, camp. So um, it's my last weekend here, so I'm just going to do free diving. And then on Sunday, I'm going back home. All right. <laughs> That's okay. it. Okay. All right. Great. Great plans. Perfect. Okay. Um, I was just uh, I was just introducing, as I mentioned, I, I, I got an email with uh, from Sean with his suggestion just after we had the last review uh, last week on the terms, on the hatch terms. And I introduced them there. He's taken a look. It seems that everything is reflected there. So I think that we can leave that document just about ready until we can fill the forms once we bought them. And and I think that's about it. We'll probably give it a final review when uh, you know when we launch or just before we launch to make sure everything's is perfect. But uh, that that's it. We passed that document. <laughs> we leave it on the. Uh, on the uh, file for for uh, for a few days okay so i wanted to uh, go over the um the uh meeting attendance terms so we make sure we take a look at that document can you uh let me see if i have it on the link on the agenda i think i do have it so i can share my screen and yeah okay Ooh, there's many email servers, screens, and the screen. Okay, it's loading here. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, hello, Ricardo. Good to see hello. you. So we uh, just let me introduce you to Sean. He's uh, he's uh, one of the latest um, to jump into the the, uh, the group. He's a lawyer from LA and that joined us uh, just a few days after you did, Ricardo. So uh, you guys, I, ha I think you haven't had a chance to join uh, one of the meetings together. So this is the uh, document. Do you wanna, do you just wanna go over it, Ivy, so we can, we can just um, review it together and and introduce the uh, the corrections or the points of view that uh, Ricardo, I think Ricardo was over, going over it also. Yeah, there's, uh, excuse me, Adrian, all, all the um, all the changes that he made and, um, and, um, and maybe, I don't know if Sean went, went, went over this document. So do you wanna just, should we just go over it real quick? Um, yeah, sure. I'll 
can start. Um, all right. So for the title, so I suggested that um because the um the original was just the uh, TC meeting attendance terms, but I thought it's. It should all be, because we were also talking about the protocols in terms and the disclaimer. So I just I suggested to um, uh, change the title to that, and I think Adrian um, applied the changes. And then okay, yes, I did. No problem with that. Perfect. And remember that this is the document that's going to appear on the bot suggested by by Adrian on the bot once people joins the. Um, the uh, new server on Discord, right? Yeah, but um. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think the okay. other changes here are made by Adrian. Okay. So do you want to go over them, Adrian, so we can just uh, get the point of of your changes? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Well, I make changes on the title as uh, suggested by Ivy. And then I also add a second paragraph to the introduction in which, mm -hmm, in, we, in which we inform and we ask the participants to agree that they will be recorded during the meetings. So they should accept these terms and conditions. That's on the second paragraph. Then um, well, there are also some minor changes. Mm -hmm. well, we, we also add these, uh, this first bullet on the term and disclaimers, saying that informing that all participants should receive a notification when recording is enabled. Actually, can as you can see that? with Ivangita, there's a red recording back there that's that's perfect that's what we okay. should is it be is it possible to not obligate ourselves to do that just just because it, it's such a decentralized community sometimes people might record things and they might not yes sir no problem the, the situation here is that as i put on the document when we talk about decentralized communities there's not too many legislation around the world we can use. This is something so, new at some point. So the most important thing here is to be sure that the community is acting with good faith. So if you don't want to put your recording flag, it's okay. Just everyone that joins a meeting should know that the meeting might be recorded or might not be recorded. That's enough. No problem with that. Okay. okay. Yeah, I just want I just want to avoid obligating ourselves because sometimes some people might have a meeting, they might record it, and they might not be cool like Ivy and yeah. Zap with, with so, the recording. So, they might even forget. So, Adrian, if 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 this will can this will cha be cha changed to might this will here? Yeah. Sure. So notification regarding what we're saying, you know, we record, you can okay. choose. Okay. Where where you want to change it to might be recorded? Here, where you here on the first bullet. Okay. Yeah. Participants okay. may, may yes. receive a notification. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, that's it. Then the rest of the bullets. Keep the same mm -hmm. and uh, those are the main changes we have made at this point i believe we were moving on mm, in a good way maybe we mm -hmm. should add uh, the, um, the notification bullet or point i don't know where it's going to be but this is the most important thing, and I want to insist in this. We're talking about a community that is made of hundreds or thousands or maybe will be millions of people. So we're all working here together for a goal, a common goal. So the most important thing here is to be informed. What are we doing? 
how we're doing it and um, the, legal, the legal aspects about this. So if we inform them, that's it. That's why the terms and conditions are so important. Okay, all right. Okay, so we just keep going down. And the final question down here, is this, uh, is this something you added, Ivy? Is there, a, if, if, is there an automatic way of notifying? This was a question on the document, right? That, so that was, that was just a way to ask if the recording that you guys are posting there is enough. And, and I guess this, uh, this is what Adrian said, and we are fine with that. So we can, we can delete that. So I think that the, the document is, is, is already covering what we, what we understand it, got, it, it needs to be covering. So from the legal point of view, it's, uh, it's already reviewed and, and, and fine. Okay, so you guys can just implement it or whatever, whatever you need to add it on the Discord and maybe keep it on the, on the code of conduct also or whatever this document needs to be linked. Okay. Uh, just a, a little higher, we changed the will to should. Can we change or change the should to will? Uh, can we make it back to should just because like sometimes, you know, we're posting this stuff and maybe someone takes the recording and uses it without our wishes and, and mm -hmm. who is our, you know, anyway, uh, mm -hmm. I guess I just want to avoid uh, pro making promises we can't necessarily okay. keep. So we just okay. Uh, yes. So we change that. We give. We 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 send it back to should. Yeah. We keep it as should. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry. I I wish I wish I I I want these things to be true, but at the same time, I don't want to obligate us to anything. It's just is more like going the other. Yes, way. we should not obligate us to anything. That's the main point of this. Decentralized community, no obligation for anyone. Okay, okay, all right. So Ivy, you you can change that. Okay, bring back shoot over there on that bullet. I cannot, for whatever reason, I cannot uh, edit it. Okay, perfect. Then we can just. What was that, Adrian? Oh, okay. You can do it. Okay. I'm gonna change it. That's it. Okay, perfect. All right, uh, so we give, we leave this document already finished. If there is any additional need in the future, we'll just uh, go over it, okay? All right, I wanted to, um, now, <clears throat> I wanted to jump into the, the initial discussions for the terms of the proposals, which is the next big document that we are going to start working with. And I was wondering, Griff, if we can use if anyone knows of any document that we might use as a baseline, baseline as we did with uh, ANG for for the hackers, well, what, what's going to be the purpose of these new terms? It's uh, okay. The uh, once the, the, the DAO is launched, um, third parties are going to be sending proposals to request for funding. Okay, we will review them as a DAO, we'll vote them, and if they pass, they will, uh, they will the process, the, the, you know, the funding process will be launched where they somehow will be audited or we have to, to check okay. out the, the, the reviewing process, but basically they will, they will be given uh, a grant to support or to fund uh, the project that they've submitted. Okay, so there's, there's, I don't know if there's two documents there. One, one, one might be the terms for submitting a proposal and, an, and another, which I don't think is going to be too tough in, in terms of legal. But then there's the document that covers us giving them funds to, uh, to fund their project. Okay. So uh, that's, that's the document we should be working on. And I love it. We can have uh, some base document to work with from some other community or some other example that we can that we can think of I'd yeah, be very we can take a look on, on documents Sorry, for uh, on other foundations maybe uh, greenpeace or those type of foundation that usually receive um, money and use it for 
um, different purposes. So if you guys have any idea of foundations from your countries, we can take a look and maybe make a mix about a lot of documents and have our own. What, what about Gitcoin, Gitcoin grants, Grief? Do we have any document from Gitcoin grants? You know, uh, I haven't seen anything from Gitcoin. I was, I'm curious about what the Lao does. The Lao, uh -huh. I mean, it's a bunch of lawyers. So like, <laughs> <laughs> I bet that they, 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 with their DAO, that they have uh, some sort of terms. And then there's this other Casper Dev, Dev Foundation or something. They're a bunch of lawyers too. And they, they are like, have a, a Dev grant program. Um, I think the the um, at least for priority though, there's also do we want to have some sort of uh, uh, for the dandelion voting? Uh, we may some sort of terms for the yeah. voting, just for the for the voting of creation of the DAO. Yeah, because technically they can also vote to spend funds on other things. Um, so like you know if if the T's hatch DAO wants they can just start sending their yeah. money somewhere else right doing whatever they want of course of course they can send any proposal and if it if it gets passed it will be launched right and right. then and then we'll need we'll need those also for later on because there'll be other governance proposals that will change the parameters of the DAO, and that's basically mm -hmm. what we need to talk about is like the parameter and for the technically the you know, we have the God mode DAO, and then we have the like micromanagement of funding DAO. And it's not even micro, it's still pretty macro management of funding, but um, technically this DAO can also spend money. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe, maybe the allow terms would be really good to look at for the dandelion voting, and then we can mm -hmm. probably convert those into conviction voting as well. Conviction. Okay, um, you guys get the picture. You, you, you guys, especially Sean and, and Adrian, you get the picture of of the different terms that, that we're talking here with Griff. Yeah, because once once we have the hatch, uh, the DAO running, the the main what, what what he calls the main DAO. Okay, it's gonna give funds to minor DAOs that will be inside the organization to deal with funds. Okay, like internal transfers. Okay, and then. Okay. It will also be giving funds. It will also be giving funds to external proposals that external parties will submit to require request for grants. Okay, so that's basically the structure of what we will be having. And on top of that, there is the DAO, the Hatch DAO, that once is created, if we get, if we reach the minimum cap, we will have to vote to create the final DAO. But during that period of time. That DAO may also, someone could submit any, any proposal, and if, it, if, it, if the members voted, it would, it would get approved, okay? So we have to somehow try to find a term, the terms for that period of time, uh, while the Hatch DAO proposes and votes to become a final DAO. So okay. I think that's a really interesting, I think that situation, the, the hatch DAO giving rise to the actual DAO, we're going to be in uncharted waters there because other than a couple of other attempts at DAOs, there, there aren't a thousand companies doing this. Um, and certainly not a ton of them where it's going to be public. So that's going to be the most interesting document, I think. The other ideas in terms of like terms for creating proposals, or uh, giving money from the DAO to the proposals that pass, that should be gettable um, either from other DAOs that are doing grants right now, but even companies like GoFundMe that are in these third-party broker situations, it's going to look similar, right? Because a, a GoFundMe is essentially saying, look, we'll collect yeah. the money, and then upon... A proposal passing our internal review will hand out the money so that that i think should be gettable as well um at least in terms yeah, of that, that's a good one um 
And then I get it that there is sort of the that weird moment in between creation of the DAO where like they it could conceivably go in a different direction. So we may need we may need some terms there. But again, I, I think that's that's sort of we're we're just an unknown territory on that one. But I, I think I understand what what we're looking for. So you think Griff, do you think we should or we could uh, create some terms avoiding any proposal unwanted in the hatch down? No, because no? we need to be sufficiently decentralized. So okay. people can should be able to propose stupid things. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we should not, we, we can say, or at least, and I'd be curious to hear what Sean and, uh, sorry, what was your name again? Sean, Adria, Sean, Adrian. 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 <laughs> <laughs> no, it's cool. It's uh, Adrian and uh, Sean. You know, it's this this idea or this theory that you know we want to be sufficiently decentralized and make sure we we have intentions that the DAO will then upgrade into a bonding curve and conviction voting commons. You know, but at the same time, the DAO needs to be autonomous and have its own decision making power to go whatever direction it wants. Uh, I, I would think that we would want the terms to reflect that you are, you know, an autonomous agent and anything can be proposed, even though the intention is mostly just this is a staging area for the next step. I mean, I think we can. I agree with that. I think we can write that. I mean, wh why not? Why, why not <clears throat> tell people in the agreement, look, the intention of what is happening here is X. But because it is a DAO, it can become Y. Yeah. And, and it may even be like an explanation early on of this is the first major decision for the community. Are we going to become the thing that we thought we were going to become or not? And I, I just don't see why we don't explain it up front. I mean, it's... it's yeah. Not. Yeah, I think it's it's relatively well explained in the hatch terms, or at least uh, I think it's called out in the hatch terms. And then now the next terms are, hey, uh, you can propose something. So who wants to propose something, anything? Here are the options. You can change parameters of the DAO. You can transfer the funds of the DAO, which is effectively what the upgrade does. The upgrade on the on the technical side, it literally just takes all the money that's in the DAO and sends it to a new DAO. So, uh, so we're, we are spending, we're sending all of the money out and, but we need to warn people of the risks. Uh, hey, and, and we also, well, we can warn people of the risks in the hatch terms, but then what do we tell the people who are proposing these votes? Right. Like, uh, are, are they liable if they, if they propose something and the, and the funds go to like, uh, get locked and everyone loses their money? Like, right. who, what do we do? Like. What is this person responsible for? I mean, what what if someone submits the wrong, you know, the wrong wallet and yeah, it gets locked up or or can't get recovered? No, it's it, it's some of this stuff is unique, obviously, right? To to just the crypto stuff. Um, but lots of the, you know, there's got to be something. Again, a GoFundMe example just strikes me as so similar because there has to be. Stuff in because all these mistakes that can happen with transferring money and what happened, there's got to be something similar in those documents that at least gives us some idea how to phrase things. And yes, it's got to be, it, it's you know got to be tweaked. But I, that's the first place I'm going to look and see what kind of exists there. The governance agreement, the the that sort of god level kind of situation. That's a little different, but I, I do I do think I do think in terms of like, look, proposals can do anything. You're you're entering an ecosystem and an economy where literally people can we could destroy this thing by vote. And it may happen today or tomorrow or a thousand years from now, but but at any point in time, any proposal could in fact get thrown out there and passed. So I yeah, but once the money, money, once the money, once the money is sent to the final DAO, the risk, you know, since there is no funds or a very small amount of funds, if if any, the risk is, you know, it's just changing the parameters that can, you know, make, can harm if 
to, the, if, if you change the parameters in a way that can that can be harmful for the final DAO, that could be the only the only thing that you would like to avoid. And, but and and our audience here is the person making a proposal, and and so this audience they will have to pay a fee to create a pro proposal. We have to tell them where that money goes. And we have to tell them what their rights and obligations are as the proposer. I mean, we have to make something up. What are their rights and obligations? Right, right. I don't know. <laughs> like, right. I, don't know. I, I don't know. That's a difference between, say, a GoFundMe that's just going to say, hey, look, here's the type of things we'll accept, right, in terms yeah. of proposals. But there's no agreement, I can guarantee you, there's no agreement in, in the GoFundMe contract that says, but of course, if you, the community of GoFundMe customers, decide to change the rules, we're listening. Mm -hmm. They'll never <laughs> say that because of how that organization works, right? So yeah, there's right. your, right. your distinction between the organizations. But in terms of like setting up a parameter, it'll have all that. I mean, it'll say these are the things we're okay with and these are the things we're not okay with. And that's basically, mm -hmm. I think, what Griff is describing here in terms of what proposals we're, we're you know, kind of looking for. But again, there's always that disclaimer kind of hovering over it, which is these, these things can change. Just, just like in mm -hmm. any kind of, you know, I, I don't mean to be flippant, but it's like it's almost like a little college club. You know, it's, it's dedicated to, to anime today, but it may be shipped back to like 90s yeah. American cartoons tomorrow if we decide that's what we like now. Mm -hmm. So it, it, that's, it's just always hanging over it. And that's unique. But I think and, I think that those initial parameters grip. I think that's doable. That that should be doable. And what is yeah. the right? What are the obligations of the proposer? You know, they have to pay this fee. But do we want to protect them from liability if they make a mistake, or do, do we want you're on your own? Yeah, or do we want to say, listen, if you make a bad proposal, the TEC might come after you. You know, if you're trying, we're gonna get your ass. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we're gonna find you, and you're gonna pay. You know, like <laughs> that's that's a reputational issue, right? I mean, that's that's uh that's the idea that in a group, if you decide to come in as a new member and just start being a bull in a china shop, and and knocking stuff over, they're they're theoretically can be a consequence, right? The community can expel you or, or minimize you or, or, or do things like that. I think that can be explained. I think that can. I, I don't know how legal it is in terms of one way or another, but, but I think in terms of telling people, here's what we're imagining and here's what we think will or will not be acceptable, subject to change, uh, I, I think we can. I, I, think, I think we can. And whether or not we want a proposal to be protected by us or you're on your own, that's more theoretical. And we probably all need to think about what we want in that term, but we can draft something. I mean, I, I, between all of us, we should be able to draft something that goes one way or the other on that mm -hmm. and then decide whether or not that's right. If we can start with, uh, if we can start with a document that you can find from GoFundMe or, or, or some other service or similar to that. Is a great, yeah. I mean, the Laos are great. I think example. that would be a great baseline to start. One, 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 mm -hmm. one, one clarification here, Griff. The, oh, and let's keep in mind, all members of the Hatch DAO will be people who's member of the Swiss Association, and we will know them. We'll know who they are. So the audience is, we, we don't expect uh, anyone that we don't know. We, we, anything can happen, but we know absolutely everyone in that group. Okay, it's not that someone jumped in and we don't know who they are. Now, one of one of the questions I wanted to Griff, once the bonding curve is running, new members of the DAO will be of the final DAO, right? It won't be of the hatch DAO. The hatch DAO will be only those that are on the hatch phase, and that's it. So we'll always have somehow controlled the group of the hatch DAO. And no new members, no new member, no new members will will ever be there. It will be just unless, the, of course, the DAO votes. The DAO decides, yeah, votes to open up, right? I mean, right. Someone, yeah, but but I can't imagine. Um, yeah, I can't imagine there'll be any new people. Mm -hmm. 
So, I mean, okay. technically, we could just loop any kind of terms that we want into the HatchDAO terms, and that could cover the people who propose, because I'm pretty sure you have to. I can double check, but I'm pretty confident that you have to have TEC token, TEC HatchDAO tokens to propose to the TEC HatchDAO. Mm -hmm. And the tokens are non-transferable. So it is only the people who, who put money in. But um, so maybe maybe I'm overthinking it. Maybe we don't need terms for the proposals. Uh, I mean, there'll be like just a few people who are making proposals, and I I'm I would I don't I don't, I just worry about them. Like, what if Sam has a bug in his code and no one catches it, right? Like he he's kind hearted. He's not trying to scam anybody. Uh, like but. He had a he had a catastrophic bug, and the funds, you know, a one is a two instead, and the funds get sent to some horrible place where they can't be accessed. Um, what happens? So he made the proposal. Do you know what do we do? Like, or is there? Do we need terms for that? Is this is this something to worry about? Am I being legally paranoid? I don't know. There's no such thing. I know that's the worst about this stuff. This is why I, I, I always avoid these. Um, I mean, on the go ahead. On the hatch term, we say uh, the fund might be lost. Is isn't that enough? Or I I remember reading that. Yeah, it's just there's you know the funds may be lost, so that that's the audience of the people who are putting money in. But now we have this new audience, the person who is actually proposing, the person who took the agency to say this is the next step. And do we need to have some sort of expectation setting with that human or those humans who would propose to to the DAO? Or not, because they're already hatchers. I don't know. Santi, I think you said earlier, you know, is this, is this one document or, or multiple documents? And I think, at least we, right now, it sounds like it's multiple documents. It may right. be short documents. I don't think it's necessarily yeah, complicated, because yeah. I, I think you're right, Griff, that, and, and I think Santi brought this point up, too, of... At least with the the hatch agreement, we will know who is there. We'll know who the people are. Yes, people sometimes hide their true intentions, regardless of what they say, and therefore probably an agreement is a good idea just to make sure, you know, we've expressed what we thought was going to happen. Um, but I don't know if that has to be a you know a thirty page disclaimer filled document that we create from scratch i think that can be relatively easy because that's that's really more it's almost i think i think of that document as more of a look here are the risks here's what we think is going to happen and and let's create this this dao that's going to function and then the hash dao kind of disappears right i mean it it eventually votes itself into non-existence once you hit the minimum cap and you transfer over to the real DAO, that hatch DAO kind of is gone, right? So, I mean, this, this first God level document is just getting us to no. that point. No, because it can be used later on, but it can be used later on for changing the parameters. So, I, I had so thought that it, it will that's remain. What the DAO we're remain. creating does. Yeah. So, so technically, and, and something that's been because of this opportunity to start using Celeste, we will have at least on the technical level a different DAO that will uh, and a different voting mechanism. It will be very similar to Dandelion voting, but it will be different. There won't be the rage quit anymore. I mean, we have a bonding curve. You want to rage quit, just sell your tokens on the bonding curve. Right. So, um, and there will be this disputable mechanism. So I don't know where, where like, if you, pro for the first DAO, there's no disputing. If you propose right. something, it's it's up there, people can vote on it. And there's, like, all these, like, vote buffer times and all this stupid shit. Um, but then for the second DAO, 
if you propose something, uh, there will need to be a very clear covenant that we need to spend time on right. that says what is allowed to be proposed, uh, and it'll and we'll have something to follow from one hive. Uh, so, if someone wanted to change the parameters of what is allowed, you're talking about then having to do a proposal at that first DAO you were talking about. So the the first DAO uh, has this thing called dandelion voting, and uh, Anytime you propose a vote there, there's these certain rules. Like there's when the vote passes, there's a delayed execution time. And during that time, people can rage quit. These sorts of weird things with that voting. And then when we upgrade to the new DAO, it's very likely to use disputable voting. What disputable voting does is we have this one hive court that basically if uh, in, a, in a, a covenant, terms and conditions basically, that say like if... You make if anyone makes a proposal that breaks this covenant, there's actually an external party, a cryptographic uh, or a crypto economic external party that will can be summoned, and someone could actually put a deposit down in Honey and say, "I challenge this proposal," and if they if the other person who proposed it doesn't put some Honey up, then uh, this person who challenged it will get their deposit, right? If they put honey, if the person who proposed it puts honey up, then two people have honey and the court will decide who gets their honey back and, uh, and whose honey goes to the, the court to pay them to make the decision. It's right. a, it's a weird system, but it's because of that, I would say it probably, I thought it would be reusable, but now I'm thinking about it. And it probably won't be very reusable. I mean, we'll be able to take some of the context out. Like with dandelion voting, you will be able to change the parameters of dandelion. Like, like let's say that we have a quorum that's really high. Uh, well, okay, guys, let's all rally together to lower the quorum. Come on, you know, and then we'll change the quorum percentage down. Uh, and then and then we can have another vote or something, right? Or change support required, or we can change some of these parameters. that is obviously not going to be covered in any GoFundMe document we ever find. No. That no. is more of a, as we're writing it, we'll have to understand the code really well to be able to explain, hey, this is how proposals are going to happen. I think we can do it. It's just, it's just going to take a few iterations. And of there, Zeptimus is res and, and Sam did an incredible job with documentation. The nice thing is that we wanted to have our smart contracts audited so so that the auditor knows what we're expecting it to do. Oh my God, we have insane, uh, um, you know, like every mechanism is explained to the max. Like we spent way too much time on this. I'm a little disappointed. Uh, we spent so much time. It's But it's so beautiful. So I think we can link to it. Um, we can link to the implementation spec. We can link to these these pieces, and we can say yes, this is how it works. And you better fucking understand that. But I think that's more for the um, the hatch document, and it's not for the person who's proposing. Correct. Correct. I got it. All right. Okay. I'm gonna have lots of questions, but yes, I think I I understand. Let's try let's try to move little by little because otherwise it's gonna be too hard. I think let's focus first on the terms for the proposal to become a final DAO, okay? To, to cover the proponent, okay? The user that sends the proposal. Let's think on that document first and let's keep moving as we, as we keep closing uh, documents little by little. Yeah, and so here's the first question there though. Do we need that document? That, that was going to be my question, actually. I mean, this is my second time here, so I'm trying to, trying to understand everything. But do we need three, five, eight, ten different documents? Isn't it not better to only have, I mean, just one final document in which we have, like, all these terms and conditions and rules, whatever? Or is it better to have, I mean, several type of documents?
I think it's always easy to start with the idea of create a document and then say, hey, this thing may not be necessary. We may, we may look Right. at the proposal, and I'm just calling it the proposal document for now. We may look at the proposal document and say, look, why did we write three pages about this? Completely unnecessary. And it's just reiterating stuff we all intuitively kind of agree to already and, and know, and then say, scrap it. The And Santi, I think you're right. We should not think about the proposal terms yet until we think about the hatch terms first. But But when we get to the proposal terms, that one I can't imagine us saying we don't need to explain that. That almost certainly has to. But let's this proposal document. I mean, what's the worst that happens? We, we spend a week thinking about it, two weeks thinking about it, writing a little something. And then well, concurrently, we can be looking at other stuff. But I mean, if we're, even if the focus is on this proposal document, yeah, you're right. We may decide we don't need it. But I think it's easier if we start with writing it and then decide we don't need it than to just start with we don't need it. And then at some point down the road go, oh, we might need to write this. So I, I like I like kind of setting it up where we start writing and then ultimately we may just go, Griff may go, you know what, we don't need this. And everyone goes, yeah, you're right. And and we throw it out and it goes in the dustbin and that's fine. Um, I mean, I would love to avoid the work if we can. <laughs> um, right. Another thing I mean, that doesn't exist. yeah, I mean, I, 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 I really just want to know, do we need to have an agreement with that person who's making the proposal? And if we, I mean, whether it goes in the hatch terms in one doc or, or we add it and just have this, but like Who's what? ultimately making that decision? Like when it works, Griff, how, how is it going to go? Who, say we hit the, the funding and everyone's excited and, 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 you know, it looks like we're going to implement this. Who's going to be the actual person that says, hey, here's my proposal to create the DAO? Like how's that, who's imagine, how's that going to happen? Uh, that would be, so we're going to have this other vote that will happen on GitHub, actually, where um, everyone can propose the parameters that we upgrade to. And there's this cool dashboard where people will be able to like pick select parameters and then, and then people with TC tokens, and this is, but see, this is all signaling. There's nothing like guaranteed out of this. process that I'm explaining now. But people with TEC tokens, or TCH tokens, will be able to vote on their favorite sets of parameters in a, kind of more like a curation way where there's a list of, you know, 20 sets of parameters and everyone votes on their favorite ones, right? And then the one that gets the top choice, uh, SEM and the Common Swarm dev team, Uh, we will implement that DAO, and hopefully we'll do it right. <laughs> uh, we'll probably do a test run of it, you know, and, and, and make sure it's right. And then we'll create a proposal that will migrate all of the funds into that DAO at, at the expressed opinion or, like, ratios where it's supposed to go because it's it'll be a complicated DAO. There'll, some funding will go to the bonding curve. Some funding will go to this conviction voting pool. There'll be all these tokens that need to be minted, right? Yesterday And you mentioned you mentioned a voting and and that you mentioned a vote and you were, you were during the sync meeting and that vote is up on GitHub, right? That's that yeah, that's vote and that was yeah. and that was on the parameters, right? Yeah. Okay. So those are the initial parameters, right? Right. So we do we do this signaling on GitHub so that okay, this is what we start with, and then. Um, and then we launch the hash DAO. And then we do the same signaling for the upgrade, right? And then, uh, but that's, the first signaling is with like these other tokens. The next signaling for the upgrade is with the tokens that were created in the hash DAO. Right. And then, and then the, the hash DAO has to actually certify this vote, right? So we, we did a signaling vote where it's like, okay, look, the, the community consensus is this. And then we'll actually have to propose that vote. Someone will pay. We're probably going to make a toll gate fee of like $500 at least uh, to even propose to the DAO to make sure that there isn't a lot of people proposing anything. Um, and, then, 
And then they, because let me just, uh, well, I'll finish this thing. And then, so Sem or me or someone who's involved with the common swarm will propose to the DAO. Uh, they'll have to give $500 to the DAO to even make that proposal. And then the DAO will vote on whether or not to upgrade. And if they upgrade, then all the money will leave the DAO and it'll go to a new DAO. This other DAO, will you'll just have these tokens sitting in your wallet. They'll just be in, in for a DAO that means nothing, basically. Uh, okay. Yeah. And all right. Well, a DAO that means everything, but with no funds, because there will be no funds. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And I just want to say, you know, uh, when we launched the DAO, like back in 2016, the first vote was, do you believe in God? <laughs> okay. Like, people will... Did it propose... pass? <laughs> what? Uh, people did, the pro will... did the proposal pass? Uh, it didn't reach, it didn't reach min quorum. <laughs> 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 but um actually i think that it was pretty close i think more people just barely believed in god than not it was a pretty atheist crew back then um but uh but yeah i i would just say we have to be prepared that the the plan of us proposing you know the only proposal even with the 500 hundred dollar fee it's bull market people got 500 dollars to troll you know uh we we uh I don't know. I just, I just wonder. It might be overkill to make terms here, right? But you're or, concerned that someone who is literally a member now, right? Because those are the only people that'd be voting on this. Would be the people we know now, and they probably hey, have to go okay. through joining the Swiss Association too, right? Hey, Zeptimus, is Sen near you? Uh, I mean, he, but he didn't sleep. Oh, okay. Okay, that's cool. Um, so I I get why there's concern because anyone can propose anything and it, it could be weird and and it may get consensus that people like it and it's not what you intended. Conversely, it's everyone you know and have been working with, and at least from what I can tell, you're practically in every meeting, so I don't know how you even do this. Um, so you have a decent idea that where people's intentions are themselves. So you, then you doubt if we need a document at all. And even if they propose, which they, even, even if they propose, which they might, because they might put, put 500 bucks and, and send a proposal, it has to pass. Correct. Correct. So you not, you not only need someone to kind of go against or, or be a rebel, or however you want to describe them, want to be a cowboy, or whatever metaphor works for you. But then it's got to have consensus, which is in a weird way, if it does, it's almost like, well, okay. I mean, that's, that's what you want to do. I, I get it. Let's, I don't think it has to be a big document, Griff, because we're starting off from scratch. So let's, I'll try to take a crack at it, at something. And if we decide, and I'll, I'll pass it around, and if we decide it's becoming a monster and makes no sense, and then we can chuck it. We can chuck it. Okay. Yeah, and I think, I think it can probably... I like the idea of it being a short one thing. We just say, hey, if you're proposing, you know, then these are the expectations. These are the risks. These are the obligations. These are the benefits. This is what's allowed. This is what's permitted. This is what's restricted or whatever. Um, I mean, I think it might be good to say, hey, if you're pros posing to the DAO and, like, you know, and it's evil, like, get the fuck out of here or something. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but, uh, but I don't know. Uh, you can definitely DM me, and I bet a Adrian would be interested to look at it. it. Sounds like he's got some curiosity, too, right? Uh, yes, totally. Yeah. And uh, if you want to lead it, that'd be awesome, Sean. Uh, I'm much better as an editor than a, read than a leader. Yeah, sure. I, I, I'm, I'm happy to, and I'll probably need to lean on Santi and just to make sure that I, I don't 
describe the process incorrectly, but I think, again, I always have kind of Santi's diagram in my head of that, that big egg with the hatch and then, and then the kind of the, it's like the chicken or the egg was really the egg and the egg. And, but it's in my head, that's how I'm thinking about it. Um, so yeah, I mean, if, if as, as long as Santi can give me a little guidance, I think I can draw something up that's not long. And then we can we can tweak it from there with with everyone's help. Amazing. Sounds great. Sounds great. Just uh, let me know when you when you need me, and I'll be I'll be there for to help yeah, you to, to assist you on whatever you need. Instead of sending you a thousand different emails, I'll try to. Oh yeah, we can sit down. We can have a we can yeah we can have a video conf and just uh, exactly exactly go over it. Okay. Okay, we, we have a few minutes left. Uh, Juanca is here, and I think you wanted to jump into one of the documents that we have uh, to discuss together between both groups, Legal and Gravity. Is that, is that correct, Juanca? Uh, yes, I can sh share screen to show the paragraph that I am uh, trying to add to the Hatch Terms sure. document. Sure. Okay. Um, is where it says governing law and jurisdiction. So um, I understand that, okay, conflicts can scale and can scale to, to, to a size where maybe we are not able to handle it internally in the organization and we may need uh, other uh, part or other um, uh, instance like litigation or a court. Um, so but the, the idea is always like to be able to start with the conflicts uh, or to identify the conflicts and try to manage them when they are small. So uh, here is that the, the paragraph that I wanted to add, like the organization provides its own procedures to manage conflicts and they serve as the first layer to provide fast, easy to access alternative dispute resolution to the members and the issues that arise with, within the DAO. But if any situation cannot be handled this way, it can scale to an arbitration or, or litigation as follows. So, yeah, like if it's needed, we can go to, uh, to, to, the, le to, to the legal ground but if if we um, if we are able to 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 identify and to solve uh, conflicts um, uh, within the organization when they are small, um, we will uh, try to to address them within our own procedures. Sounds good to me. I think I think that's awesome. I I really like this, and we, this kind of came up last week, and I think there was a how do we imagine conflict getting resolved? And so I think this is a great kind of first statement to kind of get us there. Generally speaking, at least where, where I am, if there is ambiguity, it's almost always going to be used against the people drafting the agreement and then therefore in favor of the people who had to agree to vague or unclear terms. So the, the more we kind of get this clear, I think the better. Um, so I, I really, I like that sentence a lot. I, I like that pair, whole paragraph. Great. Perfect. That sounds good. We okay. covered almost uh, all the document. We have it uh, pretty much done. And we're going to start focusing on the new, on the new terms that are going to be nice to deal with. Okay, uh, we're just uh, five minutes early. I think we can leave it here for today. Uh, thank you all for coming. Thank you, Adrian, for showing up and Sean for your second meeting. I think it's your second one. And just reach, reach, reach out to me whenever you, you wanna discuss and, and go over and start working on that document, okay? Otherwise, I'll see you next week. Thank you. Okay, great. See you have guys. a great weekend. Thank you. Bye. Bye.